Under Project 2025, if you make a million dollars a year, you will get about $70,000 more back from taxes. If you make less than $20,000 a year, you'll be paying more, upwards of about $1,000 a year. It's on page 696 of their 920-page handbook that I'm reading. There are going to be two tax brackets, 15% and 30%. Right now, the highest tax bracket is 37%, which is 7% higher than it would be in Project 2025. The lowest tax bracket is 10%, and one above it is 12%. So these two guys would actually be paying more. Now in 2021, the top 1% of income earners paid 46% of all federal income taxes. So under Project 2025, the 1% will be paying a lot less than this. In 2023, corporations paid about $400 billion in taxes. That's under a corporate tax rate of 21%. Under Project 2025, all corporations will save a total of about $12 billion in taxes a year, since the rate will be reduced to 18%. If you're not familiar with Project 2025, it is is the conservative handbook issued by the Heritage Foundation to transform how our government is run. It is centered on these four pillars. Pause to read. This handbook claims to have the contributions of two notable economists, Diana Furchgott Roth and Stephen Moore, both Trump appointees. In fact, over the 400 individuals who contributed to Project 2025, including 100 conservative organizations, about three or four dozen were Trump appointees. Meaning out of the 400 people who are committing to the economic and political overhaul of this country who contributed to the book, less than 1%, in fact, half a percent were economists. Diana Roth didn't really do anything that great, but Stephen Moore tried to shortchange his ex-wife $300 in child support and other obligations held in contempt of court. The IRS has actually gone after him for $75,000 because of a fraudulent tax return in 2014. Do with that information what you will. Now, the book doesn't say Trump has to get elected. They just say the next conservative administration. On page 278, they talk about labor reforms, which just means tearing up the unions. They call it promoting labor and pension reforms, lower taxes and deregulation in order to increase trade and investment. I am at the highest tax bracket, so this will make me more money. But two tax brackets and below, you're screwed. They are going to reform the overtime pay threshold meaning that it will be very hard for the regular worker to get pay for time and a half, and that Congress should provide flexibility to employers and employees to calculate the overtime period over a longer number of weeks. On page 104, they state that they want to reduce the number of generals to centralize command more towards the executive branch of government. But how are they going to do this? Page 19 and 20 talk just about that. At the very end of the page, they say the modern conservative president's task is to limit, control, and direct the executive branch on behalf of the American people. And they state in the first paragraph of page 20, the executive power shall be vested in a president of the U.S. accordingly. It is the president's agenda that should matter to the departments and the agencies, not their own. And if local governments try to resist it, look at page 553. Where warranted and proper under federal law, they can initiate legal action against local officials, including district attorneys who deny American citizens the equal protection of the laws by refusing to prosecute criminal offenses in their jurisdictions. Which sounds fine if there are actual dangerous criminals that are being harbored by local governments, but this will extend to people who are protesting and are evading jail time because of the invocation of the Insurrection Act of 1807. There is a lot of information like this in Project 2025, and it's out in the open. It's for free. You can look at this book. So the conservatives are not hiding what they really want anymore. They, they're they saying the quiet part out loud. This is what they are trying to use to attract people, to entice them to vote for the next conservative president. Nine years ago, if I saw this book, I would have just laughed at it because there's no way something like that could happen. And then Donald Trump gets elected. And then when he loses the election in 2020, he starts an insurrection which failed. And he's allowed to run and not only run, but become the Republican nominee. So now I understand crazy things are very possible, especially when you have conservative candidates like Donald Trump. If Joe Biden gets reelected, then Project 2025 vanishes in thin air. There's no chance of it happening because they won't have anyone who is a lightning rod like Donald Trump. If Joe Biden loses the election, then this does become a possibility, however unlikely. But here's something I want to tell the conservatives. If something like this does come to pass, Donald Trump gets reelected and the 2025 agenda actually happens, you understand that Democrats are very sneaky as well and they can infiltrate a lot. And what would happen if a Democrat gets elected in 2029 
and usurps the power issued only for a conservative president. That is a fate I don't think you really want. My name is the Geo Hussar. If you want to know more about Project 2025, sign up for my Patreon and I'll be releasing every bit of information that I discover. Thanks for watching.